Enter dungeons to the mysterious and rare artifacts that you can then use to craft or sell and upgrade your arsenal. Moonlighter is a roguelike that continues the trend of upgrading your character through trial and error dungeon exploration, but with some interesting new elements. Moonlighter comes to Xbox One, PS4, and PC on May 29th for $20, and then Nintendo Switch sometime afterward. Moonlighter takes place in a faraway village called Rhinoka. This small but growing and developing settlement is right next to a series of dungeons that have had quite the effect on the town's people. These dungeons brought with them rich and mysterious artifacts but also dangerous and deadly monsters. It brought the double-edged sword of having people constantly loot the dungeons for riches but also die in the process because of the monsters lurking inside. The dungeons were then blocked off to keep the townspeople safe, but you, the Moonlighter, can't stay away. Being the thin line between a hero and a shop owner, you go into the dungeons despite the risk to keep your shop stocked up with products while also fulfilling your dream of reaching the fifth door of the dungeons. The minor but humorous at times narrative is told through the conversations between characters, primarily with Zenon, a mentor figure of yours. They're the comedic relief and the old man equivalent to The Legend of Zelda on the NES, complete with references too. The writing got me to chuckle a bit, though it certainly is not the star of this game and quickly forgotten behind the dungeon exploration. Moonlighter takes on the roguelike genre and puts an interesting twist on it. As the owner of your own shop, you're put in charge of managing it as well as exploring the dungeons that hide away precious potential products. This setup breaks up the game into two sections, exploration slash combat and management slash strategy. First, let's tackle on the exploration and combat. The dungeon exploration is broken up into terrains that are categorized by the culture of it. For example, the first dungeon consists of the golden culture and comes with its own set of monsters, loot, and environment. In total, there are four gates or dungeons to explore and of course the sought after fifth gate that's been rumored to exist. The layout of these dungeons are similar to the classic Legend of Zelda on the NES with a continuous scrolling screen as you exit one labyrinth into another. In these segmented dungeons are monsters to fight with and items to loot. You are a really tough shop owner slash warrior though. You come equipped with your own melee weapon at hand ready to fight. You can swing your melee weapon, push back the enemy, dodge roll, and when you collect them, use scrolls to activate special attacks. The combat is rather basic, and though it was a bit boring at the start, it opens up as you begin to unlock new weapons. You see, melee weapons, much like other items such as armor and potions, can be found or crafted. However, both of these methods require the items needed for a crafting recipe and gold to pay the blacksmith to craft it. Both of these essential items can only be gathered by exploring these dungeons. This is where the roguelike nature of the game comes into play. It reminds me a bit of the setup I found in the recent review I did for Wizard of Legend and I really enjoyed it. It creates this sense of risk and reward when exploring these dungeons. If you die inside one of these dungeons, you will lose all your items you've collected during that playthrough. The only way to keep those items is to choose to leave the dungeon, but you also have to pay a certain amount of gold to activate a pendant that lets you escape. Constantly, you have to decide whether you want to risk continuing on, possibly dying and losing all your progress in that dungeon, or leaving early but keep what you found so far and paying a price for it. It's a very fun but also anxiety-inducing setup, especially when you start to get higher up in the dungeon. As you progress in each dungeon, enemies get more difficult, items get more rare, and you'll get closer to the end of the dungeon boss fight that's most likely going to cause you to lose all your items. It can certainly get tense, and that's where the management and strategy comes into play. When you decide to leave the dungeon early rather than tackling on the dungeon's boss in one particular playthrough, the items you take back with you are used to craft and sell. You run a store in your free time and need things to sell, so that's where your loot comes into play. You manually put that stuff for sale, name your own price, and see how customers react to it. Depending on the customer, some may think you're overcharging, others may pay that overpriced, some might even try to rob you while you're not looking. You can get a grasp of what the customers are thinking and how they feel about certain products with the expressions over their head. Now that money that comes out of running that shop funds just about everything in the game, and that's the strategy half of this, and that's really fun to see the progress of. The money can go towards buying recipes that use your loot to make something like a new sword or a stronger armor. That's also how you get stronger and continue on to do more difficult and challenging dungeons. Now this blacksmith I've been talking about this whole time is just one of the handful of additions to your town that you can make. Using the gold from the shop and the dungeons, you can then attract new businesses to the village, a blacksmith being one of them. This opens up the opportunities available in the town that can further help you in the later half of the game with dungeons. The last upgradable option is your own store, and you can increase the size of it, thus the amount of things you can sell at once and the customers that are attracted to it. Everything is interconnected with each other and requires you to think ahead and critically to make the right and productive choices. Though I thought it started off a little bit slow, as I started to bring back more loot and better my hero, it became a more riveting experience. 
Seeing my hero shop owner become a badass was fun and the development of the town and where to put resources towards made everything challengingly strategic. Moonlighter looks astonishingly cute and delightful. I played primarily on PC and was impressed by the subtle but great animation in the sprite design. Walking through the village and seeing the wind breeze through the shop tarp and the trees, the world felt minimalistic yet alive. The animation translated over to the dungeons to some extent, particularly with the enemies but there was room for more touches in the dungeon environment. You can interact with destructible objects laid out through the dungeon but I would have loved to see more subtle touches in the dungeon design. That tidbit aside, I was pleased with the art style and the vibrant color palette that shined the most with the day and night cycle outside of the dungeons. Moonlighter has a mostly calm and chill soundtrack behind it. Spending time in the village, you'll hear a relaxing piano tune in the background that almost feels like it belongs inside of a Pikmin game. Some of the dungeon themes pick up the calm pace a bit, but not to the extent I would have liked. They at times can feel a bit too slow for the action happening on screen. Luckily the boss battle music recovers it a bit, but the blemish is still there. Alex Holica, who worked on Towerfall's music, worked on this game's music, and though I like most of the game's music, the music for the dungeons I think could have been better. The sound effects are pretty good overall, and I noticed a lot of the details put into the presentation such as the sounds of propellers on a flying enemy, to the subtle changes in the sound of your sword hitting different types of enemies when they're made out of different materials. Moonlighter is a charming game that invites you in with its adorable looking visuals and Legend of Zelda like dungeon design, only to surprise you with an incredibly strategic management system. It's a good surprise though. While the game does start off a little bit slow at first, it quickly becomes a challenging and at times a riveting game. While the roguelike genre has been played to death within the games at this point, this game takes on an interesting twist of having you run a shop and ultimately a village on top of the whole randomized dungeons. That twist certainly cranks up the risk of some of your decisions with your hard work up as the currency. While it's similar to other indie roguelites like it in an increasingly growing crowd, Moonlighter does well enough to help itself stand out, even if just a little bit. If you aren't part of the crowd of gamers burnt out of roguelites yet, this is a game certainly worthy of adding to your library. That does it for my review of Moonlighter for the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. If you have any questions about the game or games you'd like me to review in the future, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe for more reviews just like this, and consider sharing the video with your friends. It helps more people find out about the channel, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.